No, he'll he'll be he'd be killing folk, man. He, that's what he does. Uh, let's. With that said, we've already talked a little UFC, but let let's dive into a little more here. Aside from UFC 250, I, I really don't want to get into that because you know it it was not a big time major league event uh, the way that a lot of these pay per views are. Uh, the biggest news in UFC is the stuff that's happening outside of the octagon. Conor McGregor announced he is retiring after UFC 250, said that he's bored. Um, uh, Michael said it'll be 105 next week in Bakersfield. Yeah, forget that. I'm out of it. So Hell no. Uh, the good news is, though, that out there, from what I understand, uh, I've never been to Bakersfield, but that part of the world, I understand that there's not a ton of humidity, so it doesn't feel like you're walking around, you know, covered up by a wet blanket all day, so... Yeah, you know, maybe that's good. I don't know. I, I know Vegas in the summer, like it, it's hot. It don't feel oh, as hot. No. I don't go to Vegas in the summer. I mean, I've been, but it, I, nope. it, no, it's not. Nope. My, it's not my favorite. I uh, am not doing. You cook shit at that heat, that oh, yeah. temperature, like one hundred twenty-seven nope. on the asphalt or whatever. I mean, it's crazy. Mm. Um, so the McGregor stuff. He's bored. He said <sighs> nothing excites me right now. There are no fights to make. There's no blah 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 blah. Um. And I get it. I totally Didn't get it. Didn't he accept like nine fights on Twitter? Oh, yeah. He's he's waiting for anything, but UFC won't give him those fights. He he told De La Hoya, yeah, I'll take it. He told Anderson Silva, yeah, I'll take it. He told all these people, like, yes, anything. Give me something that's a challenge, something that excites me about this, whatever. It, if he doesn't want to do Nate Diaz, I get it. He's already fought him twice. Like, what's the purpose? Now, you want to do the rubber match, but he just won the last one. So, what's, you know, what's the purpose? Uh, he wants Habib, he wants Gaethje, uh, he would probably take Ferguson, he doesn't care about Dustin Diamond Poirier, you know? Now, like, here's what's the evil, weird, but... Dana White is notorious for giving us the fights we want, yes. right? Maybe not the fighters, but those are the fights the people want as well. I, can you think of any logical reason he would have for not wanting to schedule those fights? I have no idea. Uh, one could be that you want to save McGregor for when you can have people back in the stands. That's that's one option because obviously you're going to make a killing off of whatever gate he's involved. Yeah, in, right? you get the gate, but but the pay per view money should be good enough, right? Like, there's nobody in UFC that ignites a crowd the same way that McGregor does. Right? I agree. Now, imagine what he would be like without a crowd, and who knows, right? Like, it, we remember what he was like before he became massive, uh, but he's always fought in front of people. So, uh, obviously, you don't know about him the same way that you didn't know about a bunch of these other guys. Like, uh, Ferguson and Gaethje was a fantastic fight, even with no fans. So, that yep. could be one reason. The other reason could be McGregor wants them to make a fight against Gaethje, right? If that's the case, you're not getting them until probably September. They yeah. initially came out and said July. Well, then you had Habib's dad going into a, a coma due to COVID complications, et cetera. Like, he's got major league health issues. Then you've got, you know, it, you're not going to get the Habib fight because Habib doesn't want to fight you until you've fought somebody to prove it. But McGregor's already proven it. So, like, I totally understand where he's coming from. Like, if I were him, if they offered me Tony Ferguson in... But here's the, it, here's the other part. Ferguson got his brains beat in. Like, I think it's going to be a long time before Ferguson's ready to fight. Like, he had a broken orbital bone. Like, I, I Yeah, that's... He, he, Gaethje would be before Ferguson, right? Yeah, but... Well, because Ga Ferguson's going to be a while. Gaethje against Habib is happening. At well, some yeah, point. so that, therein lies the problem. All the people he wants to fight already have other fights lined up. Well, and, and he wanted to fight Anderson Silva at catchweight at 176, but... I mean, Silva's lost like four of his last five fights. Like he is way but on hang the on. outs of his Wouldn't career. that be the perfect fight to let him fight without a crowd then? Yes. Because they, he's fighting a guy that's past his prime. Like yes. why would why would uh, 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 White care about that? Right. So so yes, we think we think he would destroy Silva. Silva's not the draw he used to be by any stretch of the imagination. Right. But he's still a name. But he's still a name, and the pay per view would do great. And if it's not a great fight, you don't disappoint tens of thousands of people showing up to watch it because nobody would watch it. And it gets him involved before maybe things open up and you can have people in the stands. 
and 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 now he's into it and he's a part of UFC because right yeah. now it does feel like he's sitting on the sidelines not doing anything. Well, it's any I'm sure that they have probably offered him Dustin Poirier. I am sure that that's happened, but that's a dangerous opponent. And why? Like, why would you do it? Like Ferguson, I can understand that, right? Ferguson won 12 straight fights before he got beat by Gaethje. That was that was always the matchup for Habib, right? Well, if you go out and beat Ferguson and prove it the same way Gaethje did, yeah. well, then you're going to get your Habib fight. Uh, yeah. The problem that he's got right now is the interim title holder and the title holder are both guys that are represented and managed by uh, Ali Ad- Adelaziz. Here's the thing. In the UFC, Ad- I don't know that that stuff matters, man, because Dana White makes the fights. I know, but the, the other guys have to agree to it, and that's part of the problem that we've run into, right, because it comes down to money. It comes down to all this other stuff. Uh, real quick in the comments, Michael says that Connor isn't going anywhere. He's just frustrated that he isn't fighting and is sick of waiting. I think he just wants to build on the momentum of his last fight. Yes, he wanted to fight three times this year. He has said yeah. that numerous times, and now we're into June. And now, he's nothing... not getting three in now. Yeah, I mean, it's if he does, it would be miraculous, right? Yeah, because like he... at the earliest, he's probably going to get a fight. They're going to give him a month to have a training camp once they name a, a, an opponent. The earliest. Yeah, 2016, he fought three times in a year. And that was the year that he got beat by Diaz in uh, January. Yep. He fought uh, uh, Diaz again and beat him in, I think, early August. And then late and then November. the last one was in November. Yeah, late right? November, he had that. So, and that, what was crazy about that November turnaround was, like, he was bloodied pretty good uh, against Diaz in that second. Diaz at, yeah. No, so, yeah. He, yeah, he got his distance. face beat in. And so, and, and still turned around and was able to come back in November and win a title. Like, that's nuts. Uh, ben said he's made hundreds of millions for Mayweather alone. Why would he want to keep getting his face punched in? Because he's a fighter. He didn't know how yeah. to do anything else. Yeah, like you made hundreds it, of millions, but like... I, I'll also tell you this. Last forever. These, these guys live life like there ain't no tomorrow. I don't know if you've watched before, but prize fighters, they kind of don't know how to save money, and it's not a lack of skills to save money. It is a... They just... They don't know if they're going to be here tomorrow seriously the way they live their lives. Yeah. Big entourages, lots of private planes, all this stuff, $100 million. It, it would last regular people generations. It lasts super rich people years. Yeah. I don't know that it's going to last Conor McGregor years. And and we'll see. Obviously, we don't know how what McGregor's spending habits are like, but we have seen him spend a lot of money and whatnot. Now he's got say, enough, he, he he's kind got of seems to, to always have a crowd around him, and those guys aren't there for fun. No, you're and right. You're right. And, and and those private jets, I'm telling you. Oh yeah, they're expensive. The they're list expensive. of people who've made hundreds of millions of dollars and ended up broke, the the top ten to twenty are all prize fighters. Now it's all it used to be all boxers because that's where the money was, but. It's about to be UFC, guys, because the mentality is the exact same. Uh, well, part of the problem that we're having all this UFC drama is, uh, and we'll we'll move to them shortly, uh, is a lot of them aren't getting paid that well. I mean, remember McGregor well, he, had yeah, to fight he for is this. he is different than all the rest of them. He has a different contract. He got to that point. Yeah, yeah, he most certainly did. In the fight with Mayweather, the fight with Mayweather is what made him the i bet that doubled yes. his money all oh. the money he's ever made in his life a hundred it, it was more than double it was i'd say but probably more than double michael said ben i'm sure he spent a ton of that money and probably just got addicted to punching other people in the face yeah he want he wants to compete yeah. i mean like, he's a period. fighter he's uh, a fighter that's just what it's in his blood he didn't know how to do it yeah. and, and then and the other thing what else is he gonna do you don't want to do like that sitting around being bored now, that's right not that. that's not safe for anybody. Uh, him, the people around him, anybody. That's yeah, true. My, uh, ben said, "Michael, yeah, probably. I wonder what it's like being Conor McGregor's money manager." Oh, Jesus, I wonder if he's got one. I'm I sure was about got- to say, "Do you think he's got one? You uh, think he's going to let some some nerd with a calculator, well, that's and, what and Michael a pocket said. protector, tell him how to spend his money? No, you can't buy that plane." He said, "Ben, it's probably easy. Who's going to tell that dude no?" Uh, Michael said, "Not a fan of how Connor expresses his frustration, but when you've had a, or when you're a badass, you can act how you want." And then Ben said, "He could golf." <laughs> I don't know that he could golf. I don't think he. I don't think he'd do that well. Uh, no. So, so let's get back to the point at hand here. McGregor is retiring because he's bored because they won't give him a matchup that he likes because he there's just nothing that excites him about fighting right now because he can't do. 
Masvidal isn't one because Masvidal is is supposedly going to fight Usman at some point. Well, he won't get that contract done because he's fighting over money. Uh, he asks to be released. Like, Jorge Masvidal, game bread, is a big-time draw. He was the number one pay-per-view earner in all of 2019 for UFC. Like, against Nate Diaz, against Ben Askren, against, you know, it, it goes on and on. He was the most watched fighter last year. Yeah, He's but he fought three draw. fights, right? Yeah, he fought three. And... Two of them were massive fights, right? Massive. That so so I mean, he wasn't the draw in those fights. No, he, no, he has he has become the draw, and yeah, that's okay. The, that's the I, he's earned that, but after that's kind the of Askren a weird fight, stat the, to say that he's the Nate know. Diaz fight was not only big because of Nate Diaz; it was also big because of Jorge Masvidal. Masvidal's uh, knee to the face against Ben Askren that knocked him out in like six seconds, UFC record, all that kind of mess. That made him an absolute superstar. Uh, and now he has worked his way up to where he was going to have a title fight against Kamara Usman, but now they're fighting over money. Jorge is, mad, so he just signed a new deal. It's a seven-fight deal, it, but he wants to be released because the UFC is not going to pay him, from what I understand, and I've tried to read as much on this as I could, and if anybody knows different, let me know. From what I understand, because... Masvidal is not a title holder. The title holder, even if he's not as big of a draw, is going to get more money, more guaranteed money, for the fight, right? So Masvidal would be fighting for the title, even though he's the draw, so he would make this, less money. This is where these guys have to see have to see big picture. This is where these guys need somebody in their life to explain to them big picture. All right, so you are the bigger name. You want the most amount of money, but they have the title. Then go beat their ass and take the title. Yeah. So, yes, take less money and take the title. That was my thought process. And um, then now you make the money, but you just signed a seven-fight contract. You yeah. signed it. Nobody made you sign it. Nobody put a gun to your head. Nobody forged your signature. You signed that contract. ESPN's so you got to fight those seven fights. So wouldn't it be worth it to you to go get those titles, a title, yeah. and then – the, the six other fights, if you can hang on to it that long, you will make more money. Yes, 100%. 100%. Uh, I just, I, I get so frustrated with people who agree to contracts and then immediately hate their contract. So it's it's so it's not just Jorge Masvidal that is doing this, that is no, I'm about sure. money, no, 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 no. Yeah. The other big name that is doing this, now obviously we also had uh, Henry Cejudo uh, that came out and said, He's done fighting. He's not making enough money for what he goes through, et cetera. Now, he's making, like, way better than you and me. Like, he's still making real good money, but he feels like he had worked his way up to a certain point and he deserved more. Uh, John Don't Bones we Jones. All. Don't I, we all think that we are way more valuable than we really are? Bones Jones. Now, some of these fighters are. And nah, but now, Bones UFC Jones tries is, to make them all Bones equal. Jones's beef is, is a personal beef. He... He needs to get his head straight. Well, but it's a, it's a money prove. beef. It's a, the reason he's upset. I, he wants more money for. I get that, but every time you fight, you get in trouble. We not. I'm not going to promote you. I'm not going to give you more money. Oh yeah, I I'm not going to break the contract we have. We went over this last week. Yeah, there's no, no way I would did. give Bones until he needs to give me three fights. Give me three fights. Pass the drug test afterwards. Don't cheat. Don't use roids. And then don't go around playing with guns and getting drunk in the street. Michael jumps in on Twitch. Uh, he said, nobody wants to work to earn stuff these days. They want to walk in and want the same as vets. Everyone who's ever worked a job knows you have to start at the bottom. Uh, here's the difference. Uh, Masvidal, uh, he is a vet. He has, I mean, he's yeah. got a ton. Some of these guys have been around the block, and they've probably earned it, but they have done things that keep them from getting it. Bones Jones is trouble. Masvidal, he signed the contract. Yeah. Masvidal so, is 35 years old, yeah. and he is... Uh, he's not fighting outside that contract. If he signs seven fights, he's I, at 35, he'll be what? 38 when he's done? Yeah, pretty much. He is 35 and 13. He's had 48 MMA fights. Um, only 10 of which have ended by decision. Two, uh, Sorry, only 10 of his losses were by decision. Uh, only one was a knockout. Only two were by submission. He has knocked out 16, he has submitted two, and he's won 17 fights by submission. His, his, his best chance to make money is to, to take any title fight they'll give him. Yeah. And then, and then he can make more 
the, at his very next fight, I would demand a title fight then. If but, I, you're not going to break the contract, I get it. But, that, but I'm a big enough he's draw. Got a, he's Let got me fight. get a chance to win one of those titles so my next six fights, I can get a bigger piece of that pie. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so, that's the that's the deal, right? Is is Masvidal wants more money, and John Bones Jones wants more money. And we, It's funny. We were just talking less than a month ago about the trouble UFC is in, not because of all this drama, but because they don't have a lot of stars. But now all these other guys outside of Connor think they're stars. John Bones Jones is a star. He, yes. He's just... He's just the crazy star, which let's not get it confused. Connor's every bit as insane and crazy. Yes. He's just not going around getting drunk and shooting people. Or you well, know, I mean, he's still he's getting drunk. I mean, remember he he, he don't have gun charges. Okay, no, no gun, gun charges. charges are different. But he, drunken he did, idiots we deal with. He did gun charges are different, and, and like also an he he's not he's not failing drug tests for roids after fights. That's true. That's fight, true. Fight your fight clean and don't dig around with guns. And, and and we should be fine. And you and you can be a diva because he's absolutely a diva. Oh, a hundred percent. But but that's Bones's problem. These other guys, just a few weeks ago, we didn't mention any of their names when we were talking about the problem USC has with not having stars. They all think they're stars, and yes, they are the best UFC has to offer. But that doesn't mean you're the best in the world as being a star. Regular people who don't follow the sport don't know your name. That's true. That's true, I bet my wife knows who 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 Connor is because she's heard us talk about yeah. him. Random people outside of the UFC world know who John Bones Jones is. They've heard that name before, and they would guess, "Oh, I bet he's a fighter." Yeah, like that. Well, and the, the reason they would know him is because of all the stuff that he's done outside of the octagon. Well, maybe, yeah. but maybe not. I mean, maybe they just they've just heard his name in the news, good or bad. They recognize it. Well, and, and literally none of these other names. It, it, Habib is probably the next biggest star, and that was made solely by Conor McGregor. Yes, that's it. no no rando person that doesn't follow UFC wouldn't guess at all who Habib is if you said his name on the street. Nobody, zero people. Let's see. And Wella Good <laughs> said, "Why are you capping? Do you know what capping is?" Nope. I have no idea. Uh, and well, let me know. I, I, I got no idea. I got no idea. Um, yeah, so so we got to figure out what's going on with UFC. They've got to get some of this stuff figured out because as we saw with 250, you got some names and some guys that are entertaining. You got some fights. Garbrandt with a KO, Sean O'Malley with a KO. Those, those were great. Those are still minor names that, you know, your everyday sports fan does not know who that is. Uh you need Nate Diaz back fighting again. You need uh, you need the Habib fight to happen sooner than later. You need Conor McGregor back in the octagon. You need Jorge Masvidal. You need all of this stuff going on. You need title fights. You need interesting, entertaining things. It was great when they came back and they had the you know the ESPN Plus fights and the pay per view initially and all that kind of mess. It, it was great when that happened right off the bat. Right after the COVID nineteen stuff, and when they found a way to make it happen, then you had a bunch of really good fights. Right now, you got a bunch of guys that could be good, but nobody really knows who they are. So you got to find a way to build the stuff, and the way to build it is to get those guys in front of other people, and those other people will show up for McGregor and Bones Jones and whoever else. Right, Francis Ngannou can't do anything because now we're waiting on Stipe, uh, Stipe Miocic and um, uh, Daniel Cormier. To fight, but that's not going to happen until probably November. If maybe, I mean, who knows? So, all of your divisions are basically stuck. Like your bantamweight champion has retired, so now you got to have a fight for you know who's going to take over the belt. Like you, all of this stuff happens, and they are they are in so much trouble if they don't figure out a way to keep people interested in the fights. They got to come up with something. You're going to have yep. to give one way or another. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that we get Jorge Masvidal and Kamar Usman. Um, but we'll see. So we got guys in the chat. Michael and Ben are going back and forth about the match. They're saying that Connor should be in the match in the next one. And then uh, we jumped in. MJ would be great. Maybe Barkley. Uh, let's see. 
Oh, Michael said, hard to keep those fighters out of trouble. That loose screw is my, uh, that makes them great hurts them in the real world. Yeah, 100%. That's, that's yeah. it. I mean, yeah, they, they, they're the reason that those old great boxers had managers literally be father figures and just never leave their side. Yeah. And many of those managers ended up stealing large sums of money from those people. They, they were absolute just leeches. They, they, there was no real care for them, but it, it, at the end of the day, it kept those guys somewhat, you know, contained. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. UFC needs these guys. Um, I don't need, I don't know that they need them enough to completely change how they do business. Uh, but I, I could see we got a fight going on, and and we could end up GSP and John Jones leading the brigade of, of fighters unionizing in this uh, could be very interesting. So, I mean, obviously we see all of these other sports leagues that have uh, players associations. Uh, if they do that with UFC, it's going to change how uh, how WME and and that bunch has to do business. Uh, we'll see, but I, I think we got a fight that will be on our hands sooner than later. Uh, because of this bunch. All right. So, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who said we were capping or if they were saying we were capping or somebody else was capping. I don't know. Yeah. So I got, I got two definitions for it, by the way. Okay. One is a, a slang term that 20th century adults and kids use mostly to say somebody is lying or not being real. Okay. Okay. So that <laughs> is what they're saying. Or ben said it's a capping genetic. means. To flaunt a fake rich lifestyle or lie about social status. <laughs> so have we done any of that? I, I don't I don't know. I don't think I, so. Not, I don't think we're flaunting uh a I mean fake I, lifestyle that, listen, and, listen, that plasma TV you got behind you is pretty stellar <laughs> and these wrestling buddies are pretty valuable. There you go. That's it. Wanna, maybe that's it. No, so, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but that's unbelievable. I could sell them for tens of dollars, and I, I don't know what we're lying about. So anyway, I don't uh, either. Maybe that's, so who that's knows? Okay. I mean, but we'll it, it, maybe that's not what they mean. That's that's what uh, Urban Dictionary gave me two definitions. That's there what you I, go. That's it. <laughs> it. Sounds good. 